Happy New Year's Eve, everyone. Hope you guys had a great weekend, and it is Monday. We are doing the last video of the year. Seems hard to believe, but uh, yeah, it's time to uh, do a, a video. I, this one is actually going to be pretty fast. I want to discuss this router a little bit, um, and then kind of go into cutting shapes. Uh, and then at the end, I'm putting a, a clip on, a five or six minute clip that I filmed actually over at Ryan's house when I was at Ryan's house in regards to the big two and a half, I think two horse um, drill master router and some issues I had with it. Um, anyway, that would be coming at the end. But for right now, first things first, this is a router that I've used for years. It's the uh, DW618. Um, now, when you guys see this, uh, there's been some confusion sometimes on whether this is a 618, but if you look at the base plate itself, you'll see it says 6184. That's the part number for the actual base. There we go. The, for the uh, part number for the actual base is a 6184. And a lot of times uh, people don't quite understand that the, the router motor has a part number but also the base has a part number. So if there's a, an issue with an extra number or something, a lot of times it's one is the motor and one is the base. But anyway, um, so in regards to this base or this router, I've been using it for a long time. This is uh, a two and a half horse router. And I didn't even realize it till about a year ago, but they actually make a version of this that looks just like this, but it's the 616. And somebody I was asking me a question about it. I didn't even know it existed because I'd never seen it. Because um, I get all my routers generally just local. But um, the 616 looks just like this, except it's only a uh, horse and three quarter. But I, I believe everything is just about interchangeable. Um, the difference is this one has um, a shaft lock, which busted about, I don't know, two years ago so I don't even use it anymore this button this was a spring-loaded button that just kind of disappeared so now I actually uh, well I'll show you I put something in there to lock the shaft whereas I believe the 616 has a double wrench setup but other than that this one has more power but uh, the retail price for this is about 260 bucks uh, you can get them cheaper than that I'm sure but are somewhere around 260 bucks, whereas the 616, um, I saw it for like 135 bucks. Um, and I think the 616 probably is lighter in weight. I, that I don't know, but my hunch is it is. Um, so it's probably a little easier to maneuver, and it will do, I think, everything as far as what I do, I think it would do just as well as the 618. So if you were going to buy a, a, a big um, router, I would go with the 616. If I buy another one, I'll buy the 616. The other thing is our base plate that we make, uh, our custom base plate, a little dusty right now, um, it, it should be exactly the same hole pattern for the 616 as the 618. So um, the custom base plate, because everything is exactly the same, I think this would fit on a 616 as well. So that is that. I wanted to kind of bring that up because uh, I'd never talked about that really before. So now in regards to, oh, one other thing that I found out about, a, uh, I don't know, three or four weeks ago, Vicki and I were had this set up for um, flattening one of her tabletops. And uh, so we had the big bit in there. I went to turn it on and it didn't turn on and I couldn't get it to turn on. Um, so I was just assuming that it went bad. I was going to check the brushes, but it definitely was not uh, was not turning on. Um, and then I realized it was the cord. And I had forgotten that this cord is removable, which is really cool because I just ordered, this is the old cord. I just ordered a new cord on Amazon and I didn't have to replace the whole router. Very handy, really handy. And I had forgotten about it, but um, and the 616, by the way, has the same removable cord. So it's really cool. So what I do, um, <laughs> this is my actual shaft lock. And you guys may have seen me use that before. So this is at my actual shaft lock that I use 
to lock that thing in when I uh, take these bits out or put them in. So I just have to change this over and put it on the, the new cord. But anyway, that's uh, really a nice, um, really nice attribute about this router is that removable cord. Once the cord goes bad, you can just, uh, maybe that's a, something that happens a lot. I don't know, it's the first time it's happened to me. But um, anyway, all right, so now moving on, I wanna talk a little bit about cutting shapes with this thing. So this is the base plate that comes with the router. Now, if you'll notice, there's a step in here, and we have a lot of videos on this, but this still seems to be a, <clears throat> this still seems to be a question that I get a lot of, is the template guide, how do we cut our shapes with routers? So I'm gonna give you some videos to go back and watch. Go back and watch 274, 167, number seven, number 139 and number 69 and dad does uh i think 274 was me but i think all the other ones was dad cutting shapes with this router using a using a, a template pattern or a, a cutout pattern and these are something that we make this is just the little ribbon shape but the questions that i get generally have to do with the base itself and these template guides these uh these are, this is a set of Porter Cable template guides that we've had for 20, 30 years, I don't know. But you can also get these at Harbor Freight. They have a brass version of these at Harbor Freight. That actually work, they should work just about as well. So the one that I use, I actually marked, it's actually 3 8 You got nothing but glare. There you okay, go. is that better? Let's see. Yeah. I actually wrote on it 3 8 So... You, you have to make sure whatever router you're using that you get the template guides that is the right size hole for the hole in your base plate. So that just goes right in there. See, that's got a, that step in there. It has to have that step. You can't use this with ours because we don't, with our base plates, because we don't have a step in there. The hole is too big. This isn't made for using the template guides. This is only made for cutting signs, routing signs. So anyway, so that fits in there. The little nut, the knurled nut fits on top. And then you need to tighten that up really good because vibration will cause that thing to loosen up. So get yourself a good pair of um, like pipe wrench uh, uh, channel lock pliers to tighten that really good. But the other thing was, uh, let me see, let me make sure. Um, the other thing is that um, the 3 8 when I say 3 8 that's the outside diameter. That's from side to side on the outside. On the inside, I don't know if I really have uh, a bit that's, uh, I do actually, cool. So here's how it looks. straight on so you need a little bit of space in there so that if you get a little deflection from that cutter that it doesn't hit the side of that and in regards to that that's a lot what this next video um, clip that I'm putting on the end that's an issue that I had with the um, with the Harbor Freight big Harbor Freight router and you'll see that in a minute when you go and, and watch or when that video comes on at the end of this one. But um, I'm trying to think of any other issues. It's, it just seems like I get this question a lot. Um, the the upcut, spiral upcut bit that we use, that we have on our website, is that's three quarters. The one you just had, right? The one I just had. That's three quarters of an inch flute length, which means it'll cut three quarters of an inch all in one shot. Or you can take it in two passes. If, if three quarters of an inch, especially if you're cutting hardwoods or something like that. But these template guys, now why, people ask, why are these other sizes in here? Well, let's say, for instance, I wanted to use this same, uh, this same deal, but I wanted to make it a little bit bigger or a lot bigger. Then I would use that uh, and see how it's further away from the template guy. It would just make it bigger. And even more so if I use this one. It would just make a bigger version of this. So you could use the same um, cutout pattern and make them bigger if you've got the, the set that has all these different sizes. 
Um, and that's what the Harbor Freight one that I was talking about. In fact, I'll be showing that in the clip that you'll see, the Harbor Freight. Uh, but I use the 3 8 because um, it's the, the best size to keep. The, it'll still cut a little bit bigger than this, but not much. Only, what, 16th or something like that. So that's why I use this particular one. But if I was using a little bit bigger one, it wouldn't be any big a deal. It would just be a little bit bigger is all. Your end piece. Um, that is it. Now, when you guys, if you guys get these from us, be sure and, and make an extra one and set it aside or set the original aside and use your, your other one um, so that you've always got an original to go back to. It's always a good idea. We suggest making it out of something like a cutting board material, HDPE, which you should be able to get at a local plastics company. It's, um, it's just cutting board material. Um, I think that's it, guys. Um, so I'm going to tag this on to the clip, or I'm going to tag the clip on to this. Um, again, thanks so much, guys, for all the support. I got an unbelievable uh, reaction from that video I did last week where I kind of went on a rant and got a little emotional. And um, I always tend to do that when I talk about business, especially if it's, if it's family involved. Um, so I appreciate everybody was just super supportive and, uh, and didn't give me, didn't razz me a lot about getting emotional. And I appreciate that guys. I, I guess you guys can kind of sense my intent and uh, that I, a lot of times I just speak from the heart and just let it go. Sometimes I just need to do that to rant, to, to see what I can do to let you guys know how great, uh, how great life can be because it sure is for us. And you guys are the reason why. So we love uh, the fact that you guys take the time out of your day, your evening, whenever, to watch us and watch what we do. We so appreciate it. Um, this year, this 2019, I think is going to be a spectacular year um, for us. Uh, we hope it is for you. We hope you go out and uh, and reach for your dreams and make it happen. Do what uh, do what you were meant to do. Whether it's this or something else, you ought to you ought to push for what you were meant to do. So anyway, guys, that is it. We love you all. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, email me directly. Please don't uh, Facebook message me because I miss a lot of messages in there because I'm so busy within my. Uh, um, answering comments on the uh, channel. I always answer those and I answer direct emails. Eric at MakerWoodSign.com But some of the stuff in Facebook I miss. So if I do miss your question, if I don't answer it within a day or two, send it to my email. Uh, I, I get through there, I answer, I spend two to three hours a day answering emails on there and comments on here. So um, I'm on Instagram every day, MakerWoodSign. And if you haven't subscribed yet, we would love for you to subscribe. Just hit that little bell icon so you get notified when we put up a new video, which is Monday, Wednesday, and then Fridays we do um, the live Q&A. Uh, what are we calling that? Friday Fun with the Rotens, I think is what we call it. Vicky doesn't like that title, but yeah, we may, uh, we may adjust that. Maybe Friday Fun with Vicky and Dave and Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she would like that part. No, it's too uh, so long. Anyway, thanks, guys. We love you all, and we'll see you on Wednesday. Happy, safe, prosperous. Year. Yes, everybody be safe out there. Have a great New Year's. We love you all. Be safe, and we'll see you on Wednesday. Bye. Hey, guys. I want to just share something with you that I kind of found out by accident. When we were over here in uh, California, I was trying to get Ryan set up for cutting shapes like the live to rides and the different shapes, the uh, cutout templates. And I picked up one of these uh, drill master uh, big routers. Uh, I can't remember the horsepower on this thing, two horsepower, uh, the drill master. And so I set it up, I picked up uh, from Harbor Freight, picked up the template guide set and, um, and the big router. And I, I discovered something that I really didn't think was going to be an issue, but it definitely was. So first thing I did was I wanted to use the 3 8 template guide because I got the whole full set. I wanted to use the 3 8 template guide in here so it would uh, be close to the same size when we were cutting. What we found out is that when I put this in here and then I tried to put it on 
the router itself, the bit was hitting on the underside here. And I couldn't quite figure out why because it should have been completely centered. But what we found out was that this base plate on here, just because these things, I don't know, I think it's like a $50 router, because these things aren't really precision made, um, I had to literally loosen these screws and move this base plate to where it would be more centered so that this bit would go up through the template guide. So I did that, and even at that, and we were still messing with it, and even at that, it was still off. It was still wasn't, um, what was happening is the bit was actually rubbing on the inside of the, and you guys can't see it, but this is the 3 8 This is the one we normally use, but the bit, because of the lack of precision on having it completely centered up, the bit, uh, my description here isn't really good, but basically the bit was riding on the inside of this and this thing was getting super hot and the bit was getting hot. So the only way I could solve the issue was actually go to the, the next size up of template guide. And once I did that, now that does make it just a little bit bigger, but it's only like a 30 second bigger. So once I did that, so the template guide that I used is the, um, the 7 sixteenths rather than the 3 eighths. So um, it makes it just a little bit bigger, but uh, where's that uh, left to right sign that you did today, son? It's around here somewhere. Oh yeah, there it is. So here's the sign that Ryan carved today, actually. But we cut this shape with, um, with this template guide in there. Once I put that in there, it, uh, it had plenty of, um, Plenty of um, clearance, but even at that, let me see. I don't, I don't know whether you'll be able to see, babe. If you can, I don't know if you can zoom in on there. If you look real close, you'll see that that um, even though that bit should be centered in that. Can you see that it's off center a little bit, yeah, right? We can. Can yeah. you can you notice that it's off center? As close as we're gonna get. Okay. Well, anyway, trust me in the fact that. Uh, even though this is supposed to be dead center on the base plate, it's not really. Um, but, so you have to have a little bit more clearance. So if you guys have use one of these big drill masters or any router that's kind of not real precision, it's more of a cheap router, for anything else that never would be an issue if you're just doing cleanup with it or you're, you're doing scalloping with it or whatever, it wouldn't be an issue, but because of this, process of it being centered um, that's where I really ran into an issue with the 3 8 guide uh, template guide so I had to go to the next bigger one which is no big deal because honestly I kind of like it a little bit better because it leaves a little bit more room around here to do more um, to more background if I would used the smaller template guide this wouldn't have been quite as much background, but I actually like it a little I bit better. Good, yeah. I think it looks a little bit better. So even though when you put the layout template on here, it's a little bit smaller than the whole thing, doesn't really matter. Obviously still makes a great looking sign. It gives you a little bit more room for, um, for background around those feathers. Anyway, guys, if you have any questions on it, let me know. Uh, but it was it was something that I had to kind of try and figure out. Man, we were messing with it for about a half hour, trying to figure out what was going on. But it's just simply because the, these aren't really precision made like a Dewalt or a Makita or a Bosch or Rigid. Um, so if you have that issue, go to the next biggest template guide, and that will uh, that will do it for you. Once I did that, the bit never hit it. That thing stayed. You know, cool the whole time, the bit never got hot, but with the smaller one, it was rubbing on the inside and this thing got super hot and the bit got hot as well, which could cause some, some problems. That can be a broken bit, any number of different issues. You don't want that thing uh, hitting that. So anyway, that's it for now, guys. Hope you have a good one. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll get right back to you. Eric at MakerWoodSign.com. Thanks, love you all, bye.